Welcome to Mobile Active's research screencasts, where we connect you to the latest M4D research. Though there are many data collection projects worldwide that leverage mobile phones, many more organizations still remain unconvinced of the potential mobile technology holds to increase efficiencies and cost savings. This is understandable as there is limited literature that evaluates the effectiveness of mobiles for data collection. Here we present the findings of Yu Ping and colleagues. They compared a PDA-based method to collect data for public health surveillance to the traditional paper-based method. Acknowledging that PDA is an older technology and have largely been replaced by mobile phones, there is much to learn from the study design and variables chosen to shed light on the effectiveness of an automated data collection tool. Much of this can be applied to our understanding of the benefits of mobile data collection. A group of 120 participants were recruited from the School of Medicine in Fiji to complete surveys in both paper and PDA formats. Another six participants were designated as data collectors. Perhaps the most interesting part of the study is the choice of a crossover design. The participants were divided into two groups and took the survey in one of two ways, starting with the paper-based survey followed by the PDA survey, or by starting with the PDA survey followed by the paper-based survey. The advantage of a crossover study is that each participant serves as his or her own control. The influence of confounding factors such as the level of literacy or learnability with technology is reduced. The disadvantage is the introduction of a learning effect. So for example, during the second round of surveying, participants and data collectors become more familiar with the questions, which may improve the data collection process overall. There was a seven-day washout period before the second round of surveys to try to reduce such influences. These are the variables that were used to evaluate effectiveness of a PDA-based questionnaire versus paper. Data quality was measured by looking at several factors, for instance, completeness or accounting for the number of times fields were left blank or incorrect time and date stamps. An example of a logical range error is if the age of a participant doesn't reflect the correct year of birth. An example of a skip error is when questions are asked which are not applicable based on previous answers. How the method impacted workflow management and time to prepare their survey, collect the data, and make corrections was also considered. Most importantly, the cost at several points of the project were assessed as well as the perceptions and opinions of users. 25 of the 120 paper-based questionnaires had at least one error requiring an action. In total, there were 31 errors in the paper survey, none of which were found in the PDA questionnaire. The majority of errors were with respect to logical range and skip errors. According to the second metric, the authors estimated the impact of workflow and cost at three stages of the survey process. It took nine hours to design the paper-based questionnaire. This includes the time to design the paper questionnaire, as well as the time to design the EPI data and EPI info database templates which accommodated the data that was collected on paper. This also includes the time for printing, collating, stapling, transporting, and distributing the surveys. It took 6.5 hours to prepare the PDA survey, which involved designing the questionnaires in a PC software, its conversion to a PDA-compatible format, and the exporting of the questionnaire to all PDAs and distributing the PDA to data collectors. The data collection and post-collection tasks took up most of the time. For the first method, data needed to be transcribed from paper to the PC-based templates. Then using a different software, the data needed to be checked and revalidated for range errors, skip errors, and missing data. Instead, it took 1.5 hours for the PDA survey. The tasks involved uploading and merging the files from the PDA to the PC, which took about 30 minutes, and it took about an hour to complete all other checks as per protocol. The authors extrapolated the cost incurred for the study to estimate costs for 2,000 surveys. They estimated that a savings of at least $2,000 could be had with a PDA space project for 2,000 participants. The cost of printing paper surveys almost equals the cost of purchasing PDAs for 10 data collectors. This is important to note that in this study, software was developed by university students who were not paid, and funding was available to sponsor the cost of a consultant. In this cost breakdown, the authors included average rates to hire data professionals and also considered the cost of technology as it depreciates over three years. Comparative advantage of PDA-based data collection is two days, or $200, for a survey size of 2,000 people. 
For a paper-based survey, a data collector can complete 11 surveys per day or a total of 18.2 days. The PDA-based method gives marginal advantage over paper-based, but as mentioned earlier, it is the data validation step that experiences the most cost benefit. Though the study takes a good look at a set of variables to measure effectiveness of an automated data collection system, there are several limitations. It does not assume the cost or time of designing or developing software or its customization, especially in the case where technical expertise is lacking. It did not capture the possibility of data collectors choosing a wrong answer from a list of options, but only measured data quality with respect to missing fields, skip errors, etc. Additionally, discrepancies between the PDA and paper-based answers were not checked, and this is a valuable metric to include. Also, participants in the study were all students of the School of Medicine in Fiji, and they may be different from typical users of the technology. This study provides a good basis of metrics that can be used to measure the cost and time benefits of introducing mobile technology for data collection. We've learned that built-in check features can improve data accuracy and the most significant cost and time benefits can be gained at the data entry, validation, and cleaning steps, and not necessarily at the time of data collection. Thank you for tuning in to this week's research screencast. Stay tuned for more mobile research at your desk. Please visit our M directory for more M4D research.